Howdy YouTube, Mark DeRemer here from Refurbished Gentlemen, and today on RGTV, you're gonna be watching a step-by-step -step tutorial of one of my finishes. Although this finish is about three to four years old, and some of the products, if not all of the products within the video are products I no longer use. So what you're gonna see is in the video description below and throughout the video, for the supplies used, I'm going to give you what I recommend currently. The main reason for that is if you contact me and say, hey Mark, I'm working through your finish and I just, it's whatever you said to do is not working. If you use what I recommend, it's gonna be easier for me to help you walk through those steps. If you use some of these older products that I no longer use, it'll be harder for me because some products change, they change their formulas, all that different kind of things. It just makes it harder for me to walk through it with you. Does that mean you can't use your products or the products within the video? No, but I just wanted to be clear before you jump into the video that what's actually in the video is not going to be what I recommend based on those facts. So I hope you enjoy the video. I look forward to seeing anything that you guys create from this and be sure to tag Refurbished Gentlemen on all my social media if you do decide to try it. Again, I slapped the knob on here so we can see how that changes with the piece and how the addition of the silver wax to end on the raised edges really makes that thing pop out of there. Now I did one for my client and she actually had silver knobs on the piece already. So we didn't do anything, we just kind of left it and then it went really well with the silver accenting I did throughout. So for this, like I said, we're gonna get a couple good coats of uh, graphite on here. And if you haven't seen me paint before, you can just kind of slap that paint on there any old way you want to. And then depending on what you're trying to do, at the end you'll decide on how you want your brush strokes. Um, so knowing your bottom layer is going to show through to the top layer. So basically what that's going to mean is, is each layer is going to give texture to your paint each layer you add. So if you want the kind of slap down look with the, you know, the brush strokes really showing through, leave it a little thicker and just slap it on any old way you want. If your client, if you're thinking what your client's wanting based on you know, conversation you had with them, something more of a clean, straight line look, then once you have it all slapped on, you go back over it nice and gentle like, and just clean it up a little bit, have a little less of it on there. I've actually screwed nails to the bottom of this uh, sample board to make it a little easier just to have it sit on the screws for me to paint all around and not have to handle it too much. Graphite's such a clean color, man. Really neat. Okay, so again, just kind of slapping on, and then I have a lot of weird brush strokes in here, which I don't want. So I'm just gonna clean it up a little bit. So I'm gonna go back over it, nice and kind of gentle light. Well, a lot of times what will happen is, as thick as this paint is, it'll pull up in the corners. So you just kind of dab into the corner, pull some off, and then spread it throughout wherever else. Um, that's one of the biggest thing I've noticed, kind of a tip, is after you've painted it, go back and look at it about five, ten minutes later before it really dries hardcore because you'll probably have pooling or like what I get a lot, which really annoys me, is I'll pull off a corner and I won't pay attention to the other side of the corner and I'll have a, a drip there and it'll dry that way. So you'll have to either you know, cut it off, sand it off, pull it off, and then you got to repaint it. However many layers you ended up doing. So just be aware of that kind of stuff, like pooling in the corners and any, uh, like if you scrape over an edge, it'll leave extra paint there. So just little things to be aware of. Okay. So one coat down, you see it covered it really, really already but still some streaks in there that I'm not going to want of that lighter oak color so I'm going to go back and do a second coat 
So when we get to the next video, I'll already have the second coat on because first coat, second coat, pretty much the same thing. We're just gonna make sure I get complete coverage. So the knob, like I said, just paint right over that thing. And it's gonna just blend right in at first. But then once we get to the very end and we do the waxes, that's when it's gonna kind of pop right off of the off of the door, which is gonna be cool. We kind of dig it in there a little bit and straighten out my brush strokes. All right, and that's it. So first step down, coat of graphite. Like I said, it could take two to three coats. When we get to the next step, um, which would be clear wax, I'll let you guys know how many coats it took for this particular piece. It's looking like it's gonna be two because it covered it pretty well. And that was a lighter color oak. But like I said, the grays, all of Andy's grays cover really well. I'm actually use Paris gray as a base coat sometimes over a darker piece when I go lighter. So it covers really well. So that's it for now. And like I said, once I get all that on there, next step is actually gonna be our wash. I almost forgot talking about a wax. The wash first and then the wax, because we're gonna do all the paints first and then get into the waxes. All right, so what we got is two coats of graphite, as you can see, covered really well. First coat always looks like it's not gonna cover, and then the second coat just completely, you know, does what it does. Unless it's some, you know, really contrasting color, like a white or something like that. But for the most part, any of the grays from any song will cover really well. So that's what we got. So our next step is gonna be the wash. Wash can be done so many different ways. So it just depends on, you know, what way you found that's good for you and what way it works for the particular project you're doing. Um, for this wash, I'm using the Paris Gray. Um, basically, long and the short of this is I dip a little bit on my brush. And I use a flat brush usually, and then I discharge almost all of it onto a plate. So just something like that, you know, just, that's all you need for a wash. I mean, seriously, you're not gonna need a lot of paint for this. Um, almost flattening all off, almost like you're gonna do a dry brush kind of thing. Like that. And then for this particular one, I'm not doing any dipping or watering down of the paint first. I'm just gonna simply take my spray bottle. This is just water. And we're gonna do one of these numbers like this. Now, the trick to this is um, ultimately don't put too much water. I might put a little bit more on there, but you're just gonna wipe it off anyway, so it doesn't really matter. But the trick to this is not to wipe too hard. Just kind of gently pull it off because you'll pull some of your graphite off with it. So you're just kind of Gently dragging your shop towel over top. And what this is going to do is just give another layer of something to your project. That's basically what washes are going to do for you. Um, you know, a lot of times it'll creep down into the your brush strokes. Let's see, let's see it better this way. Like that. It'll creep down into your brush strokes that you have. So you have like almost like a wax, a white waxing effect for obviously this color anyway. And you're just gonna continue to do that until you get it where you want. Yeah, I put a little bit too much water in there, so, but no big deal. You just wipe it off until you get it where you want. You don't have to wipe a little bit more than I probably would normally. But that's really all there is to it. I mean, there, but there's other ways, like sometimes I brush it on and I brush it off. I don't even wipe at all. It just depends. On this one, all I'm looking for is like a really cool, cloudy, hazy overtone to my graphite. And why? Because I was going for, you know, it's castle black. So I was looking for that stone castle kind of look. You know, that's why I named it that because the way it turned out was 
like I said, almost like a stone rock look to it. Kind of like castles getting built back in the day, right? So that's it. I mean, pretty cool stuff. I mean, that, gra that plain flat graphite went to this really cool texture knob. I could wax this and be done, you know? But what I decided to do was add a couple more steps to it to get that castle black look. So for today, that's pretty much it. Um, we're gonna wanna let this dry overnight because with that much water, especially how much I accidentally put on there, uh, you're gonna wanna make sure it dries thoroughly before you start putting any wax to it. Um, the only trick to the spray bottle, and one thing I wanna make sure I mention, if you spray, Onto, onto paint, especially any sloan paint, and you don't get that spot, there'll be the wet spots in your paint. So you'll have like spots, almost like uh, grease spots when they creep up through our paint sometimes. You'll have those spots on there. And then if you wax over that, those spots are, are there. You know, you're not waxing and making that spot go away. So you have to remove the wax, go back down, and even it back out again. Because uh, how that, and those spots hit, it darkens the paint so it shows those wet spots. So you have to really um, wet it good, make sure you look all around and you get everywhere so it's evenly spread out and not in spots, which is another reason why I kind of sprayed more than, you know, maybe I needed to, but I remember a, lot, a couple times I've sprayed, that's what's happened to me. I've sprayed, I forgot to wipe down this one spot and then I go to wax and there were still little spray spots where it hit and I didn't wipe. So, you know, just a little trick when you're using that spray bottle, make sure you give the look. I'm gonna look all the way around, no spray spots. And of course, this is a sample piece. So I'm not too worried about the edges being perfect. The general idea is for this finish is to give that cloudy overtone to the graphite. And this just gives more layers. Any layers you can do, especially with any Sloan's paint, really, I mean, just works wonders with giving it a cool, unique look. Because anybody can paint one color. So if you can get two and three and four colors into a piece, that's what really will, you know, make it different. So you just kind of play around with it. And like this one's kind of contrasting colors, a darker color with a lighter color wash. And then I'm gonna go back with a darker color wax and a lighter color wax to blend it all together. So but that's it for today. Our next step is gonna be clear waxing then our black wax, which I'm going to do in two separate, um, uh, two separate ways to get specifically what I want to have done. I'll go over that when I get to it. And then the silver wax and it'll be done. So that's it for now. And like I said, next will be the clear wax. Okay, so here we are. We have our graphite with Paris Gray wash. And you can see I did it kind of in streaks, up and down, up and down. I mean, you could do it all over. You could do it however you really want to. I wanted to have some kind of like directionality to it with what's going on with the, what was the grain under the wood. So what we're kind of mimicking is almost like, you know, a wood grain kind of look, but we're changing it to make it look, you know, grays and blacks and, you know, what looks kind of white now with the Paris gray. So. That's pretty much it. And it, I mean, it changes it a little bit, but you're probably wondering like, you know, probably didn't change a whole lot. Why would you do that? Well, for me, this gives it depth. If you look at graphite by itself, it's pretty flat. So anytime you do a wash, it just gives it a little bit more depth to it. It looks like there's, you know, different layers. Like you can see a little bit of the gray, a little bit of the graphite, a little bit of the gray, a little bit of the graphite, you know, that kind of thing. And then when you go over it with the wax, as we all know, the wax deepens the color, which, you know, of course, you know, gives it another color. And then we're gonna go over it with black wax and then the silver wax, which again, they're gonna add more colors. So just gonna add really some really cool layering kind of effect to it. So our next step is clear wax. So I got my clear wax here. And we'll be able to knock all this off one right after the other. I uh, have a lot of people ask how long you gotta wait to do your accenting waxes after you clear wax. You really don't have to wait a whole long time. You can pretty much do it right after. Um, sometimes I wait a day if I have something else going on, or sometimes I do it right after I'm done waxing. Just 
Depends on how you want to do it. So, you know, wax brush, you know, your usual deal. Um, people do it all different kind of ways. We've done it in different videos, the circular motion, um, with the grain motion. For this one, I'm just going to go with the grain of how I painted it. So that way, if it does leave any wax streaks, which we know it does sometimes, uh, it's going to be in line with the directions of how I paint it. So, really quick and easy. So I did a whole sample board. I'm just going to go over this thing real quick. And of course, have some shop towels handy. It's always the easiest way to do it. Now, those that, you know, that maybe this is your first video watching, whatever, um, when you're waxing with a brush, you definitely want to be careful not to brush too hard because it will peel the paint off if it's only been like a layer, like one layer of paint. Like especially if it's two layers of paint, you might have some better luck without getting it to eat through the paint, but just kind of the brush motion on the edges a lot of times will pull that off. So, getting on that now and down and around. Make sure I get all around the edges on this thing, I guess. Okay, so as you can see, I mean, it's really just darkening the color with graphite. Just kind of wipe it all back. We're picking this thing up because it makes too much noise against this table. But yeah, look at that. That's cool. So you got some streaks from the wax, some streaks from the Paris gray, and then what was underneath there is that graphite. It looks, it looks awesome. So that's kind of what you're looking for. You know, I, when I was doing this particular finish, I wanted to have like streaks. So it looked like kind of like stone. Let's see, you know, Black Castle, you know. So, so here. All right, so if you can see, I got some wax stuck in the, the cracks still. So you basically take your brush after you're done with what you're gonna last and just kind of dig it in there and pull it back out and then turn your brush around to another side where the wax is still built up on your brush from pulling it off and move it down to that corner. That'll happen. I mean, I'd rather have the wax get into all the paint spots than not, and then have to go back and do this little second step that I do with the corners, just to make sure all the paint got sealed. Because ultimately that's what the clear wax is primarily doing. It's sealing your paint, protecting your finish. That way, whatever fun stuff you do over top of it is protected. Real good. So. There it is. Easy peasy. So our next step is going to be the black glaze and then the black wax. And why do I do two different things? So for this particular finish, glaze, especially in the cracks, is just going to go on easier because it's a little thinner, a little smoother. You can get down in the cracks and wipe. Whereas the wax by itself is a little thicker, a little, um, I'm trying to think of the right word. It's just thicker. And if you go to white, sometimes it'll leave thicker chunks than what you really want. So if I know a piece has lots of cracks and crevices like this, I'll go with the glaze first. And if it looks good, good. If it's where I pulled it off and there was too much of it came off and not enough stayed down in the real specific spots where I want the, the shadowing to be, I go back over it with the wax by itself and I'll do it more finite detail with like a smaller brush and get it right into the spots where I wanted it. On this particular piece, the piece I have for the pictures, I did a black top separate, totally separate way than the bottom and I really need the black to come out. So I went a little thicker with the black wax and spots to pair up the black top with the black bottom because when you're putting the the black glaze or wax over the graphite, it will not quite look black, like a 
deep dark black because it's blending with another color, a lighter color, ultimately graphite. So to keep the really dark black, I put thicker spots of the wax in there. So anyways, I'll get to that step next, but this is what it's gonna look like. You know, very subtle streaks of Paris gray, nothing over the top. If you choose to do it thicker so you have more lines, you can do that too. But this is ultimately what it looks like. Howdy, I hope you're enjoying the video so far. And if you are, please be sure to hit that subscribe button, the notification bell, so you know next time I add some new content. And please, please, please share. The biggest thing about my uh, or motto or whatever you want to call it is create, share, inspire. And that's what I'm trying to do. Create content to inspire people to start painting, to try new things, and just maybe step outside their comfort zone. So if you are enjoying this content, please hit that subscribe button, which will ultimately help me grow my channel and in turn allow me to reach more people. So, um, I told you guys I start with a glaze. So normally I'll just grab my regular uh, black wax, you can tell, my black wax brush. And I'm gonna dip it right in this thing. And I got it all stirred up real good. And ultimately for this, you're gonna start in your cracks and crevices with the thickest part of what you grab out of the can. So I get a good, yeah, a little, little chunk, and then I shove it down in the cracks. And shoving it in is probably the best technical term I can come up with, because that's pretty much what you're doing. You're just like jabbing it down in there because it would look kind of silly if the deepest parts are still the regular graphite. Because the deepest parts are part, parts that you're kind of antiquing with this method. So you want all those deep areas to have a deepened, darker look to it. That's the whole point of you know putting the darker waxes in there. And then once you get it in there like that, then I just kind of streak it across, going with the direction of the, the piece. You know, not having a lot, just kind of dipping it back down into the thicker spots and going across. And this is just where really, I mean, your artistic flair comes in. I mean, there's no real exact science to the black waxing. It's just how, how do you want it to look? You know, I like when I'm doing something that's indented like this, the corners to be a dark, darker color and then to be lighter towards the center. And same thing on the outsides, like I would go all around the outside, make sure these are dark and then wipe away a lot of the black wax from the middle where, you know, you know, you're kind of giving it that shadowed antique look. So I gotta get some up here, drag it along the edge there. Put some down in this handle, grab some back out of here. So that's kind of the cool thing. I don't have to go back in the handle a lot because I already shoved quite a bit down into these cracks where I'm gonna end up leaving it for the most part. But, Okay, so it's kind of like kind of a hot mess right now. But you're gonna take your chop towel and you're just gonna wipe it. Yeah. See what I'm saying? So now you got streaks, and it, it, I mean, it could be really, really faint or it could be really, really heavy, depending on how much wax you put on there, how hard you wipe off, how soon after the clear wax. I can do it, I'm doing it right after I clear wax, so it's gonna come off quite a bit easier. So. And then you just kind of play with it. I'm going to go up and down with the direction of, because I want it to look like streaks. Uneven, messy streaks. Because a, a brick or a rock or a castle looking thing is not perfectly done. It's perfectly imperfect, you know. So, yeah, it's pretty good. Looking good, looking good. And then you're just kind of right over top of the knob. 
And if I wipe away a little bit of the knob, that's okay, because remember we're gonna go back over that with silver, and that kind of happened right there. If you can see, I'll wipe back down to the copper a little bit. No big deal, so don't stress over that because we're gonna go back over that. And the same thing with some of these edges, I accidentally hit them a little bit too hard with either the brush or this thing right here, and pulled a little bit of my paint off, which I don't know. So as you can see, I'm going back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. That's fine if that's kind of what you're looking for. If you're looking for one clean swipe, you kind of want to go like that and stop, look. But for me, what's left on the rag, I want to kind of re back, reapply back to the paint. I don't want to wipe it off completely. So I kind of go back and forth, back and forth, and it's going to continue to leave traces of the black wax on there because I don't want it to go back down to the graphite all the way. I want it to have some of the, the black wax showing through. Make sure, and like I said, I like to leave, especially for this particular piece, some really good heavy black in the cracks to really antique it. You know, like if you looked at an old, old piece, you know, it's gonna get dirtier in the corners and all that kind of stuff. All right, so there you go. We got the black wax, and if you can see, I put it, more in the corners, which is going to harden over time, kind of give it a cool look to it. Okay, so that's that. So what I did on the other piece was I went back and hit it with the black wax. And how I did that was I got a smaller brush and put my glaze aside go straight to the black wax. And again, why I did that was I wanted to have more, um, more of the black where you can really, really see it. I did pretty well with the glaze today on that piece. It, it gave me a little bit of trouble because I was, when I was wiping, I think I wiped a little bit too much off and then I went back and I took a step back and looked at it and said, okay, the top's really, really black, like jet black. And then the bottom was a, a blended too much together. So I went back and I just hit it. So you just take a smaller brush like this and just hit the area you want to hit. So I'm going to get it right in these little cracks like that. And I'm going to do one little section at a time now instead of doing the whole thing because I want to be more deliberate with what I'm doing rather than just kind of all over the place like I just was with the first layer. So now I'm going to take a little corner of this thing and what I'm trying to do is keep it straight so when I go over these bridges, what's down in the, the cracks, I'm not touching. So I get it good and straight and I go across and just peel it back. Do that one more time. There you go. I don't know how well you can see that, but now there's a more definitive black line going right down in the crack right there. And even on the curved part, I was able to keep some in there just by taking that one little flat piece rather than taking the whole rag and doing that one number I was doing before. Again, being a little bit more deliberate about it, getting a really flat, straight line going over the ridges. It's only going to get the highest points when you're doing that because that's what you want. You want to pull the wax off the highest points and the deepest points you want to leave the wax on there. So just slide it back across, just like that. So that's why I did a glaze and a wax. Now, if you're perfectly fine with how it ends up turning out and you love it after you did the, the glaze, or if you don't like doing the glaze and just want to do the wax, you know, to each his own, you know, however you think it's going to turn out exactly how you want it to. I'm just kind of giving you you look inside my brain and what a how I came to the finish and exactly how I got to the final because uh, I don't want to leave anything out just because it's kind of assumed or anything like that. This is exactly how I did it. I went with a glaze first. It didn't quite look exactly how I wanted it to because it was too thin with the black antique wax. So I went to the uh, regular wax at the very end. So that's it for this step. 
and the last step is probably the most fun and one where you really have to just be creative and think about how you want it to look in the end. Um, I'll just show you how I did it and how I hit it um, with the silver and then also hit it back with some black to dull it down in a couple spots where maybe you're like, oh, that's a little bright. So that's what's cool about having the black wax and the clear wax around is you can just wipe it right back off. But we'll get to that in a minute. So anyways, that's what the black wax looks like. That's pretty cool. All right, all done with the clear wax, the black wax, and now we want to do the silver. That's what I did right here, yep, silver. So this is a uh, Gilder's Paste Wax. I'll have that in the uh, description. And it just comes in this little tin thing. If you've never seen it before, kind of reminds me back to my basic training military days. We had a can just like this. You had to shine the boots with before they got to, got rid of the the boots that you had to shine. Now they don't have them like that anymore. So, anyways, so it's just I mean this couldn't be easier, but you really have to um, be mindful of how much you get on your finger and how hard you press. Those are really the only two tricks. So I use just a bare finger. Some people use brushes. I don't know how you do that. Um, I tried it a couple of times and it gets all over the place. Like if I use my finger, I can feel what I'm touching. I can see what I'm touching. So I always use my finger. Um, mineral spirits will take it right off. So, you know, as far as cleaning, it's a piece of cake. And it hardens really, really well. It looks amazing when it's done. So um, I like this stuff. There's also uh, Rub and Buff is another uh, company I have some stuff from. They come in little tubes and either or. I mean, they both work amazing. It just depends on what color you're looking for. And I just happen to use silver on this particular piece. So again, you're gonna use your finger, rub it in here like this. So you get just a little bit on your finger like this. So for this particular piece, what I did was I went on the edges. Like that. And I'm going to zoom in so you can kind of see what I'm doing a little bit better and give you guys a better idea. But I just want to show like a quick little, this is all I'm doing, I'm just gently rubbing on it. But let me uh, zoom in, I'll come back and we'll do the knob and some other stuff so you can kind of see a closer view of actually how hard I'm pressing on it. Okay, so hopefully this works. I got to zoom right down on the spot. I'm not going to move the board itself. But as you can see, I mean, just a little bit on my finger. And that's all you're going to need. So you're going to gently rub. I mean, gently. And you'll see it will discharge off your finger onto the piece. But especially when you're doing the raised edge areas, you don't want to press too hard. You're better off just doing a real gentle first and then hitting it harder as you see the wax come off or as you get more comfortable with, you know, how to apply it. Um, if you've used this stuff before, you kind of know this part, but just want to make sure for those that maybe have never tried to use it. It's some cool stuff. I mean, look at how awesome that is how, and how that just changed. You just changed the whole look to that knob. It went from kind of black, dull, gray looking thing. Now it's got some character to it hit the raised edge area. So now you got in the depths of black, the gray is the mid, and then the silver is that, you know, really good contrasty color. So for this particular piece, I hit the corners and edges. I obviously hit the knobs. So I just basically really, really gently run your finger along the edges of the piece. I mean, really gently. And you try to get as little on your finger as possible. I might have got a little bit around my fingerprint more than I probably would want to. But all that means is you just have to be more careful. So you just kind of gently rub your finger across it. And then as it comes off, you'll need to go get some more. But also, because your finger is rounded, you'll have like top part of my finger might have the, the thickest part of the wax and then I just round my finger down a little bit and then the middle fingerprint will have some more wax. So you just round your finger around and you might have more still on your finger that you can use. So for me, it just depends on how you want to do it really. 
You hit your corners like this and really rub it in. And you can get some cool effects that way. So then, okay, you get it on there and then you're like, well, Mark, I hit it too hard in one spot. So how do I fix that? Well, the easy fix is you dip your finger, where's your, you can get your black rag that you wipe the black wax off with. And you can just kind of rub with that and that'll dull down the silver. That's one way to dull it down. And I actually did do that on some spots where I felt like the silver was kind of overpowering. I wanted to give it some shine to the corners, but I don't want it to overpower the piece as a whole. So you just kind of go over it. And that's all you had to do was keep that little shot towel handy. And that just dulls it down a little bit. You know, like that. Or you can always hit it with your clear wax rag, which will ultimately almost entirely pull it off, completely erase it off. Or if worst case scenario, you hate it, you hit, hit it with some mineral spirits. And then as long as you don't hit it too hard, you're good. But if you hit it too hard, then you have to go back and clear your black wax, depending on how much you pull off. So that's it. So we've gone over graphite, Paris gray wash, a clear wax, a black wax glaze, and then a black wax to hit it in the depths a little bit thicker. And then our silver gilders paste wax which is good stuff, to give it the highlights. And as you'll see in the piece, the highlights really went amazingly well with the door knocker knobs, um, or door knocker poles that I had on that piece. So, but that's it, that's all there is to it. Hopefully you enjoyed that video, you learned something, and ultimately at the end of the day, get inspired to try it. I really hope you do. If you do, be sure to tag Refurbished Gentleman on Instagram and or Facebook and just let me know. Let me see what you've done. And of course, if you have questions, drop them in the comments down below or you can find me on Facebook on a more day-to-day -day basis. Uh, please, please, please subscribe. Share this content out if you did enjoy it. And last but not least, if you do decide to utilize the um, products that I'm currently using that I'm recommending to duplicate this finish. You'll find everything in the links down below. They're all affiliate links and those affiliate links will continue to support me and allow me to provide free content for you. And in some cases I do have discount codes from the companies that I work with that will allow you to get a little bit extra something off of your final purchase. So all those things are at no cost to you, but they do help me in the end continue to do what I love to do. So everybody have a blessed day and as always, happy painting.